Hello, this is Barcode Specific Adaptive Sampling from Human Gene Panels to Viral Amplicons. Uh, I'm Alex Payne from the School of Life Sciences at the University of Nottingham. I'm here to talk about read until or selective sequencing, which is a unique feature of Oxford nanopore sequences where you can inspect molecules as they are sequencing and either choose to reject a molecule or allow it to finish sequencing normally. We've already demonstrated this with our tool, Readfish, using a base calling approach on both GPU and CPU. Readfish has been used by uh, Danny Miller, looking at disease-causing variants, uh, Ariba Patel, who is speaking here about speeding up looking at central nervous system tumors, and finally, Ira Devson, who is speaking later about identifying short tandem repeat expansions. So, barcode-aware adaptive sampling. Here's an experiment that we ran with our four diff uh, with four different species on different barcoded samples. Ideally, we'd like to be able to switch off individual barcodes once they have enough data, have different targets on each barcode, and uh, do this all adaptively without having to stop and start the software. Guppy can assign barcodes, uh, so we wanted to know, can it do it fast enough for read until? To test this, we used a toy experiment on this library. So, can we switch off individual barcodes? Yes. Here we switch off barcodes uh, 9 and 10, enriching for barcodes 8 and 11. And then in the subsequent run, we do the inverse, enriching for barcodes 9 and 10 while depleting barcodes 8 and 11. This is stable and it works. Can we target specific loci on each barcode? Again, yes, we can. Uh, with the same library as before, we target different quarters of the genome on each barcode, which are the regions shown in black. Now that we have a system that works, how can we use this in a real world scenario? Human panels, they're an obvious choice. So on a single grid arm flow cell, we ran three barcoded samples using different human cell lines. Barcode one used NA12878, which is a well-characterized cell line. Barcode 2 used NB4, a leukemic cell line with a known fusion between the genes PML and RARA. And finally, barcode 3 used 22RV1, which is a complex cell line with copy number variations. For each sample, we chose a panel based on their known characteristics. Barcode 1 used the TrueSite 170 gene uh, tumor panel. Barcode 2, having a fusion, we targeted the 508 genes from the TrueSite RNA panel while Barcode 3 used the cosmic panel of somatic uh, cancer genes with 717 genes. In total, we had a yield of 18 gigabases, and overall we had an on-target N50 of roughly 7 KB, and our rejected reads had an N50 of 579 bases, which is roughly 1.2 seconds of data. For Barcode 1, our on-target uh, on yield was 0.355 gigabases, and it had a mean target coverage of 11x. The yield for barcodes 2 and 3 was better, reaching uh, 1.24 and 1.25 gigabases respectively, and the mean on-target coverage was 15 and 11.5x respectively. If we look at the coverage over some of the targets, here I'm showing uh, BRCA1 and NBR1 uh, on the left, in the middle is PML, and on the right is RARA. The boxes underneath show the target regions and the colors show blue for sequenced and red for rejected data. As you can see, we're getting good enrichment over our target regions and good specificity on each barcode. And using this data, we can identify the known structural variant between PML on chromosome 15 over here and RARA on chromosome 17 over here. And these are two reads that uh, confirm this fusion event. And as both these genes are in the cosmic panel on um, barcode 3, we can look for the same variant, but we do not find it there. We do not just utilize the on-target data though. Here, using the off-target data from rejected reads, we can assess copy number variation across the whole genome for barcode 1 by binning uniquely mapping reads into 50 KB windows. Any 12878 has two copies of each chromosome, as expected. When we look at barcode 2, we can immediately see differences across the genome. For example, you can see changes in copy number variation on chromosome 4 or chromosome 5 here. Barcode 3 also shows a difference in copy number. For example, the single arm of chromosome 1 has gained a copy there. And like I said earlier, this is a complex sample with uh, many copy number variations. As these are well-characterized cell lines, 
we can we also have some data from BioNano optical mapping, which almost perfectly matches the copy numbers we see with our nanopore data. This is barcode two with nanopore data on top and the BioNano uh, analysis below. And this is also the case for barcode three. It almost perfectly uh, it almost perfectly recapitulates the copy number variation that we see. So that was just three barcodes. How far can we push adaptive sampling? During the pandemic, we've focused on the Arctic protocols. We have monitored and generated consensus sequences for SARS-CoV-2 in real time using Minotaur. And we have implemented pipelines for starting analysis as soon as there is sufficient data. We wondered if adaptive sampling could be integrated within these workflows. The standard Arctic protocol is too short with amplicons of roughly 450 bases. However, we can use a 1200 base pair scheme and we can dynamically switch off barcodes and amplicons by monitoring them in real time with Minotaur. So here with the longer 1200 base pair primer scheme, uh, this is the typical variation in coverage that we would see for 96 samples, including the controls from a SARS-CoV-2 run. When we limit the coverage to 200X and we switch off barcodes when they've reached that target, this is what we see. The overall effect is that we reduce the read count for barcodes down to a more manageable levels. This is acting like a filter, but it does work with the 1200 base pair scheme. Here, I've cherry picked a couple of barcodes. This is barcode 88, which had quite high coverage in the control with some amplicons having over 2000 X coverage. And as you can see, we uniformly reduce the amplicons to 200 X. Filtering out samples this abundant increases the number of low abundance amplicons that we can see, such as barcode 24, which has lower coverage in the control, as we can see here, and we can increase the number of these amplicons that we see. For example, here in uh, amplicons one and two, they uh, did not reach 200x in the control, but they do in uh, our experimental condition. And for amplicon three, we increase coverage from roughly 30x to 80x. And overall, the coverage is more uniform. So how useful is this approach? When we had a target coverage of 200x, we both reduce the time and increase the number of uh, genomes that we completely recover. Here, completely recover means at least 90% of the genome has at least 20x coverage with this primer scheme. Uh, and we see an increase of 53 amplicons above 20x, and that is roughly two, uh, two more genomes recovered. So just to recap, we wanted to be able to switch off barcodes, target unique regions on each barcode, and allow this all to be updated dynamically. And here we have sequenced uh, multiple human genomes on a single grid iron flow cell uh, with, with uh, sample specific target panels and we can assess structural variance and copy number variation. We can also address 96 barcodes simultaneously uh, with shorter viral material. And while this is more of a filter, we still recover more data than we would just sequencing everything. So barcode aware adaptive sampling works and is available now in Readfish. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in Minnow soon and we look forward to this working on Promethean. In addition, uh, we will be adding some extra tools to make the configuration and running of Readfish easier. And for more adaptive workflows, we have a new tool, Swordfish, for connecting uh, Readfish and Minotaur specifically to enable dynamic experiment updates. Preprints should already be online or available soon. And with that, I would just like to thank some of the people who have been involved. From Nottingham, Matt Luce uh, and Rory Munro for help with uh, Readfish development and Minotaur. Uh, Nadine, Chris, and Matt Carlisle, all at Deep Seek Knots, who have run these libraries for us. And Roberto Santos and Terry Fori, who have been involved in the Minotaur development. At uh, British Columbia Centre for Disease Control, John Tyson, who uh, designed the scheme with help from Josh Quick at the University of Birmingham. Thank you very much.